Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I'm just sitting here drinking my morning coffee. Got a hook grip on it. A lot of people would say that's cheating on the grip on my coffee, but I gotta practice my hook grip. Uh, as you guys can see, there's real coffee in there. There's no fakery, even though there's a lot of accusations about my coffee. And yeah, getting my day started, waking up, just got out of bed, uh, getting ready to get my squats going for the day. And I've had a few different questions lately about different types of pain that people are getting on their pull-ups or chin-ups, and I've had people ask a few questions, and I thought, you know, let's just do a little bit of general video on this. Now, qualifiers for that. I'm not a physical therapist. Don't claim to be a physical therapist. Never taken any classes in that. Uh, obviously, I've taken classes in exercise physiology and things like that, but I have no knowledge of physical therapy other than what I have observed talking to therapists, uh, things I've learned online, um, practical experience. Now as far as pull-ups and chin-ups go though, a lot of people have noticed I've built a pretty respectable amount of chin-up strength. Uh, considering as of right now, and I'm trying to get better at it, it's one of my main exercises I'm putting effort in. Uh, just so anyone who's not aware, I weigh 237 pounds and right now I do a dead hang chin-up with 95 pounds uh, of extra weight from a dead hang six days a week on camera. So this is something I do all the time, right? I chin up six days a week. Uh, and if you do the math on that, my body weight plus the plates, that's 332 pounds. And I do it six days a week from a dead hang at the bottom, at least a full second hang before I pull up. So I have a respectable amount of chin up strength, not world level. Maybe it will be if I keep working at it. But I also have a previous injury. Um, I've ruptured a bicep. I've had to have this bicep reconnected. I have tissue loss in that muscle. So therefore, I personally am very prone to pain, inflammation, things like that in this left bicep and even in this um, connective tissue down here in the tendon. So things I've had to learn with that. One of the big things, people talk about elbow pain on pull-ups, chin-ups, things like that. A lot of that has to do with the way that you grip the bar. What I have learned, and I have learned this from physical therapists, uh, is someone who gets pain in here, down here where your bicep tendon inserts down on this protrusion, there are a lot of muscles that insert into there. In fact, a lot of the muscles in your forearms, they insert into that same point. That area, if you tend to do things when you're pulling or curling or anything, if you tend to grip things in a wrong way, meaning where you turn it into a wrist curl, if you think about it, if you squeeze that into a wrist curl, the way you can feel that right there. All right, it's pulling in that same area. You can cause a lot of inflammation there if you ever allow on your chin-ups or your pull-ups your wrist to come under like this when you're trying to get that last inch or two at the top, right? Uh, so what I would say you need to focus on if you're experiencing a lot of that pain, just learning to grip it a little bit under. And that's how I personally grip it almost the same way you do a bench press to where you turn, cock your wrist back a bit, grip it, pull yourself up tight, and then pull yourself up. Uh, and people, then you can, you can have this problem on any variation because even when you're doing a pull up overhand grip pronated, which is a pull up and the chin up is underhand grip, or you, you can even do it with the neutral grip if you end up cocking your wrist, trying to get a little bit higher. And at a certain point, you've got to learn to get as high as you can. I mean, obviously you want to try to get your chin above the bar, but a lot of times, if, if in order to get your chest to actually touch, if you have to bend your wrist this way to do that, it's going to be a problem. Uh, and so the best way that you can bend them would be to pull them backwards if you have to to do that. And you're not going to be able to do that once you're in motion. You have to start with them already back from the dead hang. Uh, so something to work on, something to be very, very aware of. And if you just can't pull yourself up without curling it back under, then you're going to have to just not get that last inch of the lift. You're going to have to just not worry about it because ultimately you're going to cause damage here if you continue to do that. That inflammation gets worse and you're going to definitely reach a point where you can't do your chin-ups or pull-ups anymore. So that's the first thing you need to fix. Uh, the other thing to think about is how wide that you grip it. When people do these really wide grips, anything outside of shoulder width, you need to be very, very careful. A lot of times you'll see people do these really wide grip pull-ups and chin-ups and people who are, say, bodybuilders might tend to do that because they have this belief that it will make their back wider. And that, that's not true. The width of your back is purely going to depend on how much muscle you build in your lats. And that's going to be a product of how much workload those lats are subjected to, you know, combined with rest, food, all of that stuff. That's going to be the main factor there. 
uh, that grip width is not helping you. But what it can do <clears throat> is that it can put unnecessary stress on your shoulder joints. But just like when people do really wide grip bench press, why do people do that? They do that to shorten the range of motion so that they have to do less work. It makes it easier. So when you start doing that, you might in some cases be reducing the amount of work that you're doing. Uh, but it might take some of the muscles out that you want don't get worked as efficiently. So in some cases, you might end up not even being as strong, but you're doing less work with your back because you're moving a shorter distance with the same weight. And it puts unnecessary stress on your shoulder joints. I don't recommend that you do it. Because again, it's not helping you. You're getting no hypertrophy or strength benefits from doing that. It's just simply no reason to do that. Uh, even overhand grip, probably no wider than this. Probably no wider than this for a pull-up. Uh, at least if you're going to do a pull-up overhand grip, you need to be looking at are your forearms parallel 90 degrees from, from the ground. Uh, and you probably don't need to go any wider than that. Now the neutral grip and the chin-ups, you can get quite a bit narrower. <clears throat> the narrower you go, the longer the range of motion, the more work you're doing. That's a better thing. That's good if you're trying to uh, get additional muscular development and if you're trying to improve uh, athletic performance. All right, you're, getting, uh, you're, you're training the muscles to do more work and to have a better strength curve, to be strong through a fuller range of motion. That's a good thing. So that's another thing to look at. The other thing that people need to consider, some people are just not built for certain variations. All right, they're not built for certain variations. At the end of the day, what you have to remember, yes, there are going to be differences in the muscles work. Yes, we could argue that the overhand grip won't work the biceps as much as the underhand grip. Uh, they work the lats about the same. All variations of it do. They all work the rear delts. They all work the traps. But we could argue about the biceps, but I'll play devil's advocate here. Uh, what have we found in research? Has we ever found in research that that actually meaningfully matters in the long term. In other words, when they, we've taken people who aren't necessarily advanced lifters, but it's been studied in novice lifters, it's been studied in college athletes, it's been studied in people who have at least a year of continual weight training experience, and what have they found? That lat pull downs, overhand grip lat pull downs produce just as much bicep growth when it's measured over a couple months as people who do curls. So, and curls are a more efficient line of pull. And a lat pull down we would think of as not an efficient line of pull for the biceps, but it causes just as much bicep growth as people do in curls. And when people add curls to it, they don't necessarily see more muscle growth when we measure it. And that's not to say that more advanced lifters might not, because again, more advanced lifters need more muscle activation to stimulate growth. But we know at least in novice lifters out there, and that's going to be most of you listening. Trust me, most of you guys are novices. I promise you, most of you guys out there listening, uh, watching YouTube Fitness, aren't repping 315 on the barbell squat. You're not deadlifting 400 for reps. You're not benching 225 for reps yet. You're, you're a novice. Uh, so it might not matter that much. And so we know based upon that you can get respectable bicep growth from even a lat pull down if you do enough workload. So a pull up which is considerably harder, should be fine. Uh, so you've got the different variations to work with. And I would say, in all honesty, uh, even though I do the chin-up because I, I just want to get strong at the chin-up with the underhand grip, if you can't do that and you have access to the neutral grip, the hammer grip, that's, again, no, no wider than shoulder width, there's good EMG data showing that even the bicep activation and everything on that neutral grip is phenomenal. It's easily just as good as on a curl. Uh, and <clears throat> out of the three variations, it might arguably, based upon limited amount of data, might actually have slightly more overall muscle activation. And most people, when they test their strength on it, uh, who do all of them, are usually the strongest on that one. A lot of people do seem to be. There are exceptions. So again, arguably, it might have the most muscle activation. So if one of the others hurts for you too much to do, and you have access to the, the parallel grip, you might want to just consider doing that. Now for me, historically, it has aggravated my tendon again, but it was also before I realized I was doing the wrist curl thing myself. Uh, so maybe it would work for me, but I don't really have access to one that'll handle the sort of weight that I'm doing. The only one of those I have access to is a little cheap one that goes inside the door frame, and I pull up way more weight than it is uh, rated to handle, so I end up breaking something. So I use the one that's on my rack, and my rack doesn't have the parallel grip. 
So if you can do that one pain free, but you can't say do the underhand grip or the overhand grip, but you can do the neutral grip pain free, hey, great. You're gonna get all the benefits that you want out of that. So go ahead and do that one. And that's the last thing to consider. Even though you might really, really, really want to get strong at one of these variations, if you have a variation that always bothers your elbows, you've sorted the other problems out and you just can't do it pain free or without inflammation, you might need to use a different variation of it. You're still gonna get tremendous benefits from any of those three grips. It doesn't matter. They're ultimately all very good exercises. They will all build uh, half a dozen muscles, muscles up very effectively in your upper body. They're all fantastic lifts. So if you're forced to do a different variation from the one that you really wanted to do due to chronic pain or inflammation from it, it's really not a big deal. Do the one that you can do. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.